from Honorable Kinyoros. Uh, I, I, I hope I got your name right. Munyoro, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Um, so yes, the question you had is, uh, yes, GDP numbers, but people are complaining. So there is this issue which I, I kind of alluded to, which is you cannot eat GDP. That is the, my rough way of answering it. So even we as economists, even as we kind of get excited about growth rates and charts and all that, at the end of the day, it is what do I take home? So there are two problems here. First, GDP is the income for all of us. All of us, the entire country. You know, we could say that this section are getting a lot of the share, the bigger share of the cake. And these other ones are not getting much. That is the first problem. Actually, COVID around the world has shown, has increased the inequities that we have seen in economies. So we are not talking just Kenya. I'm not talking of the COVID billionaires and millionaires. But I hope you can protect me, right? You know, this, uh, whatever I say here uh, remains without. You are protected, uh, yeah. Governor. Thank you. So, so there are people that became very rich during COVID. But where were the others? Where were the others? There are people who lost their businesses. They got closed, etc. That's what you hear. So inequities, or should we say inequalities, have become larger, not less. And that is an important thing. When you think about inequities, or inequalities, you also think about inequalities about opportunities. So for instance, when they say they are, com when I complain or you complain or somebody comes to you and complains, you know they've, they've had, they had a bill, as I said, uh, of somebody, one of the most, I'm like you, yeah? You are an important member of our community. When all this was going on, how many people came to you asking for money to bury somebody. It wasn't one, I'm sure. And it, this is not the harambe that we always do. You know those harambees, right? Uh, no, it is because people needed, they were a serious need. And then you give your pickup, you do this, you do all those other things, because people are in serious need. A lot of you also did things like provide food, yeah? Um, we talked about Kipchoge. He actually provided a whole bunch of the runners because they were not getting any money and they had run out of money. He gave them something to sustain on. So that is what you hear. And I think it is important to appreciate that they are not wrong when they complain. It's only that maybe we get too focused on, the, on that bottom line and not realize that actually that number can hide a lot of other things that we need to deal with. So that's my rough answer, and I think uh, you can see where we are going with that. Um, you talked about China inflation. China, the problem is not inflation. The problem is growth in China. They used to grow at 10%. Yeah? I remember when uh, a few years ago, when we were working in a different life, 7% was sort of like their bottom line, sort of like minimum, yeah? That's the flow, 7%. Where are they now? This year, they'll be less than five. I mean, if that is not an earthquake, I don't know what is. And this is all done by COVID. So inflation is not a problem there, but since they, the entire economy came to a crashing halt, their growth rate it's the one that is now a big problem. And I don't know, they, they did have a big uh, meeting recently, I think two days ago, I don't know what came out of it, but I'm curious to find out what they said about growth. Um, but at the same time, uh, China growth, they have a big issue, which is a bubble in the building industry. So they, you know, they have been building all this, you know, so the, bub the, the buildings and, mainly residential buildings. And they've just been growing like mushrooms everywhere. And banks are, were financing it. Now that whole growth model has come to a halt. And they have to deal with the weak banks that actually now cannot 
uh, that are sort of on the ropes because of this sort of bubble which will soon burst if they are not careful. So there are problems in China as well. And I think we have to learn, and I take your point, let's learn from everybody um, and uh, avoid those uh, mistakes um, that uh, maybe would, uh, would be very expensive. So thank you for your points. Um, now, the, the uh, Mueshimiwa from Nakuru, I didn't get your name, but uh, it's okay. You know, you make this point about women at, uh, you know, the issues that you face, and I'm sure you have very detailed uh, examples on this, high interest, etc. I think we are dealing with it in two ways. First is to make sure that the institutions that are lending are lending according to risk, right? So, for instance, the women that go to, you know, let's say a lady who has um, a certain business, and she's been doing that business. You could even think of hair salon or whatever, and she's very good at it, etc. Why shouldn't she get additional uh, financing so that she can expand it a little? Yeah. So it is because she's been there for a while, she is good risk. And that the bank has to accept. Um, that as, you know, her history as such. The biggest problem, to be honest, about why women don't get uh, as much credit and et cetera, or maybe at times get very high interest, is often because banks end up asking for security. Yeah, I have many examples about this. They ask for titles. And you know that is a problem. Uh, I don't need to say any more. Yeah? In our society today, you know, not many women have titles. Um, it is, you know, niabona, title niabona, you know? So we have issues there. Um, so I think the point here is why we are so pushy or we are pushing this thing of improving the, uh, let's say, the, the, the banking the, the banking sector, the way they lend with, and we have indicated through our banking sector culture, I mean, sorry, charter, so that these issues can be dealt with. So it isn't, the, the most important issue isn't the institution as such. It is the things that hold the women back from bring, being brought into the financial space in a full way. One of the things we'll be doing, and we have been working towards this, is also so that we can have, let's say, portable credit or credit ra rating, right? So today and now, actually we've done this. In CRBs, at times they end up treating you in a negative way. By the way, we've made progress. I'm not going to say too much about this, but we've made a lot of progress, more than, say, uh, has been acknowledged, but that's okay. I think we want to have these conversations. But we want to get to a point where actually a good borrower, meaning one that re repays, uh, can actually benefit from that and have a lower interest rate for future lending. So it's not just about uh, women as such. Yeah? About, uh, it is really about some of the things that hold them back, and that's what we are trying to fix. Um, I would want to have conversations with you in the future and. I'm willing to even have conversations with some of your groups um, to suggest ways and how to deal with this. I'm willing to also talk to some of the banks. Uh, some of the banks actually have been doing some specific program for women. And actually, to be honest, those programs are doing very well. So we could have some offline conversations at the right time. Um, there was a question about, by the way, also it's an issue of information. We need to put out information and I do acknowledge that we need to do better in this. Then there are two questions about uh, the Kenyan denomination, and the first thing, of course, is to apologize to uh, our chair, the, the speaker, because he asked a question right at the beginning, and I forgot. I'm sorry about that. The quality of the currency, and then also the availability of Kenyan denomination uh, currency. I think the first on the availability, um, I want to be very explicit about this. We have more than enough uh, pieces of paper, you know, currency um, for the country. 
more than enough in all denominations. So it's the banks that need to request. What happens, frankly, is at times a particular bank, right, in, uh, let's say, mind you, it's, we are not talking, let's say, APSA. It's not APSA in general. You're talking APSA Kisi, or you're talking, you know, uh, con um, well, whatever, a particular branch, you know, this road in thicker, you know, that branch. They may not be good enough in terms of making their requests. It's just like any supermarket. You know, you may go there and you find they don't have bread, but there's bread available elsewhere. But for some reason, when they order, they didn't order enough. And so there's a bit of, let's say, planning problem with some of the banks. And this we've seen, particularly as you were doing your elections, right? There was a lot more demand of some of those currencies and therefore at times they got it wrong. But I want to assure you that uh, that is not a problem that should be with you um, because it's really, and it's going to be resolved as things. Uh, as a matter of fact, at this moment, we are seeing a lot more currency coming in into the central bank as opposed to going out. Um, so I think the point I'm making here is that we will resort, this balance will be resolved quite quickly. The question about quality of currency, um, Bona Speaker, this was actually, this was a concern a little earlier. Today and now, if you go out there, I am willing to, to take a bet that you won't see dirty currency. Yeah? Or there'll be very little dirty currency. And uh, the point is that we listened to you and we, we did our work with the banks quietly, making sure that whatever is there uh, is clean and of high quality. So I think the point I'm making is at the beginning there were concerns and for several reasons, one of which is the way people are treating it, but I think also the way the currency had sort of been put out, etc. cetera. But uh, today and now, um, that problem has kind of subsided and I haven't seen it. And again, as I say, we are seeing the currency that's coming back, you understand, from the all over, you know, after your campaigns, we are seeing it coming back. <laughs> so, so we know what we are talking about. <laughs> uh, uh, then what else? The issue about credit and subsidies, etc. I don't know who answered that question. These are things that we need to be more, we need to discuss a lot more. Why? Because it's not a one-sided thing. It's true, as the president said, and uh, again, as you, you asserted, um, any subsidy is a cost. It's a subsidy, but at the same time, it's a cost in the sense that somebody needs to be taxed somewhere to cover that subsidy. So that balance is one that needs to be struck. And I think also there's another side of it, which is when the subsidy is removed, it will be prices will rise, as happened with the super um, petrol, and therefore that will be reflected in inflation. And there will be knock-on effects, matatus will increase their prices, I'm told that now they've increased on the thicker road and other places, Narok, I don't know. Um, the point I'm making is the other considerations and that's why it is important to have a, a complete 360 degree view about subsidies, etc. But the bottom line is subsidies are generally, uh, they are generally temporary. They work if it is temporary, but with time, they end up having, creating serious distortions in the markets, and that's why it is important to deal with them. Um, a few questions by our Muheshimiwa Ichungwa. We've had a lot of conversations, even remember in Bali, that famous room. We've come a long way, haven't we? Um, I think this is something, your questions are valid, okay? Uh, I think the point here is that uh, the conversation about the one million, uh, you call it the one million limit. We don't think of it as a limit, but anyway, that whole thing. As I uh, explained recently, this is something that 
we need, we as central bank are working on. Why? To improve it. It's not working the way it should because it's being used in some sense to punish you. Yeah, in a sort of, and in a, you talked about even handed or even playing field. I don't know, I wrote here even playing field. I don't know whether that's the word you heard. And even that, there's a problem with it. It should be straightforward. It should be straightforward in the sense that, you know, my favorite example is the petrol station attendant. Yeah, so I own a petrol station and I, I get, I don't know, 200, 2 million every two, three days I deposit it. When I go to the bank, they know that I, I own that petrol station. So why is it that they keep asking me, where did I get the money, where did I get the money? You know, and you, even the banker filled his car at my petrol station. So in some sense, there has to be, let's say, some sanity in, in the way they deal with the customer. The KYC, know your customer, needs to be properly KYC. That they know you, they know that I run that petrol station and every so often I bring in 200, 2 million, etc. And so those sort of issues need to be dealt with. The other things, which is, I'll mention it and then move on, but the one that really bothers me as well is, and again, this is an example, you go to a bank, the bank has a policy, let's say APSA, right? It has a policy. And you go to APSA Queensway or APSA Westlands, and let's say you are depositing money there, um, and yeah, one million, they have no problem with it, right? Then let's say somebody else is depositing one million in APSA Kitui or Kajiado. You know, the manager can say, hey, one million. He is Taguza, where? And Anazo. You understand? So the manager is becoming a petite whatever, right? He's, uh, he's changing the rules by himself. And that gentleman has no, that depositor has no recourse in a sense. So we are trying to put some sanity there. And, uh, but I think we need to do it correctly because we don't want to undo some of the things that have helped us. Yeah? But we do understand it's an issue of customer pain points. That's the word I use, pain points that uh, we need to deal with, understand them and deal with them. And we've done some work already. We do hope to see the benefits of those um, going forward. Um, the last point you had, you had was uh, about adequate foreign exchange. I want to again assure you that yes, we do have adequate foreign exchange. What was happening is in the two, three years, A, two, three months, you had people that were, again, trying to bring us back to golden bug. I want to say that again. People that wanted to bring us back to golden bug. And if you remember what was happening in Goldenberg, this is what some of the people are pushing towards. I don't want to get into the details because, you know, they will ask me, where's the proof? Yeah, and I'll say, well, I don't have proof. You know, I'm not DCI. <laughs> um, but I think the point I'm making is the hype, the pressures had nothing to do with what was happening in the markets. And what was happening is, okay, you do have some rogue traders in particular banks, and they are working to do their thing, right? And so we, we went after those, and we've dealt with some of them. Now, you cannot kill every single mosquito in the room, um, but I think the point is you have to deal with it, yeah? And I think that's the sanity. But I think also part of that was obviously, uh, you know, we were in a, a particular kipindi, you know, politics, etc. So everything was politics. But now that we are on the other side, I think um, there'll be better appreciation. And I can already assure you that uh, sanity has returned. I mean, even uh, from, uh, um, yeah, right actually from the beginning of, uh, you know, from the announcement and indeed even the recent uh, decision by the Supreme Court, you can actually just see the numbers and you can see, you know, the thing is coming down to where it should be. Yeah, what well, should be? Obviously, it won't happen in a day, but we are getting there. And thank you for your support. Good. Can we do another round of yes. Uh, four? Yes. I'll start from here oh, again. Oh, oh Chair. Uh, yes. One thing I forgot. Uh huh. Uh, he asked, 
Honorable Ichungo asked about the digital. Um, yes. I want to, assure, to tell you that, yes, this has been a long journey that we started quite some time ago, and uh, we owe a lot of uh, a tribute, or let's say, to Honorable Oyo. Remember him? Who passed away? I, f I forget his name, first name, but you know him from Kisi, yeah? Um, because he's the one who pushed us quite hard, or well, worked with you and ourselves. And this was one of the bills that was brought to Parliament, etc. And in the end, uh, the chair, then it was uh, uh, Honorable Wag uh, pushed it over the finish line, etc. So we've done what we should have done this year. And yesterday, on the 17th of September, that was uh, Saturday, uh, we actually began, uh, we finished that process of uh, the first batch of, uh, uh, let's say, approving, licensing the digital credit providers. And today we issued a press release, which you can see on your phone, um, indicating that uh, we have now started this. To be honest, there were 288 of these people that came to us, 288. Just imagine the mess that those people are creating. We approved 10. You ask why? What happened to all the others? Partly because the others were playing uh, Maneno, right? You ask them questions, they don't answer, yeah? So we do understand, it's now they're on the other side. You understand what I'm saying? So now they have to play according to the rules. We are not just going to rush them through just because they, are, they have a big name or any of these things, yeah? And that is exactly what you wanted. You wanted us to restore sanity. And I want to thank you for supporting um, well, I think the country, more than anything else, is not the central bank. We, you know, we are KYMs, you know, uh, so we do the work uh, as agreed. But I think I feel better that we, this thing now has started. The, that train now has begun to do what it should do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Here. Yeah. Another round. Let me take the honorable member at the back. Gary, I'll come to you. I'll come here, take Mama Nairobi. Uh, there's a gentleman who had actually stood up, the honorable member, in a dark suit. I'm sorry, I can't see that far. Waluke is here. <laughs> okay, and the last will give uh, the honorable Waluke. member lady uh, on the front. Where is Waluke? I'm here, your ex uh, speaker. There. This side. Okay, you'll be number five. Okay, thanks. So let's start with number one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank number you, Buona Speaker. From here. Yes. Come to Mama Nairobi. Go to the gentleman. Is, is it Okukaunya? Yes. Sorry, I had not noticed.